progress. Uh, Got my it. name is Sobe Snow. I'm a youth counselor um, trained in Aegis. Um, I'm a member of the League of Utah Writers in the Monkeys chapter. In my day job, I work with neurodivergent young men who uh, struggle with mental and behavioral issues. Uh, it's a field where we need to recognize the types of responses I'm going to be teaching you today in order to prevent behavioral escalation and build rapport with clients. So how people communicate is 58% of communication is nonverbal. 35% is paraverbal, which is voice quality, tone, tempo, cadence, rhythm, volume, things like that. 7% is verbal. That's the words we use. Um, in crisis situations, 100% of communication can be nonverbal. And all behavior is communication. Uh, so, for example, when a person in, in crisis, they may not be able to articulate their needs and emotions, emotional distress, and research shows that people express emotion in their body language and facial expressions before they can verbalize it or even become consciously aware of their feelings. Uh, Nonverbal non communication consists of haptic, which is touch, physical movement, gesture, posture, Body dormant, clothes, jewelry, tattoos, hairstyles, etc. Uh, proxemics, that's interpersonal space, breathing patterns, and focus of attention. Um, the same way cultures use different language, different cultures also use various types of nonverbal communication. Uh, some is universal, but not all. Uh, that includes the personal space, eye contact, feedback behaviors, interpretation and turn-taking behaviors, uh, gesturing and facial expressions. Uh, does anybody know any gestures that are different out of cultures? I once heard that in Bulgaria, they could say uh, a no could be a nod of a head. And that was made for all kinds of confusion. Hmm. We want to say no, they might, it's just a slower, it's a different nod than a yes nod. Uh, uh, I do know down in Brazil, you do not use the okay sign to say okay. It, uh, it is a reflection of our body part. Yep. Those are good ones. Um, any others? Or... Let's see. In Italy, they just put like letter L to your forehead, meaning loser, and they just go in like this, like crazy. So <laughs> flash and letter L, so you're a loser. Yeah, they do that in America too. Unfortunately. There was this weird thing in Denmark, I don't know if it counts for this, but they would often, if they were paying attention to you, but they didn't actually speak, they would do an intake of breath like, <laughs> like that. And that was that was confirmation that they're with you, but they're not actually communicating. And I don't know if that that's kind of that's not really verbal, but it's still done with the mouth. It was, yeah. took me a while to break myself of that habit when I got back. I have a friend that's married to a woman from Southeast Asia, and I want to say Vietnam, but I'm not exactly sure. But he has made mention that he's had to learn how to read the different facial expressions, which is something you're going to, but he was talking about in terms of gesture because a raised eyebrow carries all like a whole sentence. Hmm. Honestly, I'm surprised with how many gestures kind of carry the same connotation as the extended middle finger, like the USA thumbs up, or basically, anyone know the peace sign with the two fingers, the middle finger and pointer finger extended upwards? If you point it backwards so that the top of your hand is facing your audience and your palm is facing towards you, that is actually a very rude gesture in England. Apparently, that started because archers were showing off that they still got their fingers and screw you, ha ha. 
All right, the further away from your brain, the more honest you are. People are more attentive to suppressing, concealing, or complying with cultural display rules in the upper portions of the body. That's because the limbic system has signatures in place to protect the torso and vital organs. And your feet are the most honest part of your body since they're the furthest away from your brain. Uh, and interestingly, the direction your feet are pointing indicate which direction you want to go in. So if you're pointing towards the exit when you're talking to somebody, you probably want to leave. Things like that. Um, uh, we comp compartmentalize the body into three zones. That just makes it easier to um, observe, I guess. Um, so one is the lower half, the feet, you know what's legs. The biggest problem in Beverly Hills. What's that? Sorry. Um, no, carry on. It was it was a, it was a dumb comment. All right. It was a joke. It was bad. No. All right. Um, the number two is the upper half, torso, arms, and then the face is the third one. Uh, research shows that people express emotion in their body language and facial expressions before they can verbalize it or become, I uh, already said that, before they become consciously aware of it. Um, what is typically called the fight or flight response would be more accurately described as freeze, flight, or fight. Evolution is driven by predator-prey relationships. The result of human evolution's response to threats is in the environment. These responses play a crucial ro role in the assessment of nonverbal communication, and it happens outside of conscious thought process and is involuntary. So the first one is the freeze clusters. Um, predators of all types are extremely focused on movement. So, and when you're frozen, the blood consolidates to large muscle groups, major organs, and digestion is suspended. Their eyes get big and hands rise to the upper torso while typically staying inside the plane of the body. Also, we call them clusters because you want to look for more than one than just one um observation so like they could be doing one thing but it doesn't necessarily mean anything if there's not multiple behaviors going along with it if that makes sense now when you talk about the freeze cluster here when we think when i think fight or flight or freeze i think you know <clears throat> that actual physical damp danger <clears throat> actual um mortal danger um, are these same kind of reactions in like social situations, like when you forget someone's name or you have some spinach in your teeth or something? Yeah, so it can be how would uh, you just that perceived way? danger. Okay. As well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely can. Even a social danger or a yeah. All right. Maybe this is why people don't vote. What do you think, people? Whoa! Yes. Okay. Freeze cluster. Okay. That's a good one. I'll keep it. In. Sorry, sorry, Phil, we carry on. Um, generally, the freeze is a precursor to flight or fight. Um, it may be more apparent baseline in people who have survived trauma. Um, a freeze response is triggered when people feel unsafe, uncomfortable, unconfident, or exposed. And it may show itself in very subtle ways. The observations of the freeze cluster include the lower half, the foot evasion, hiding feet under a chair, hooking chair legs, etc. You're going to hear etc. a lot. Um, the upper half, arm restriction, freezing, bilateral or unilateral. Um, that means on 
bilateral is both sides of the body and unilateral is just one side. The upper half also includes turtling, so head shrunken into slightly raised shoulders and the face eyes get big. So to close your eyes and picture an audience at the circus when a big cat walks out, what do you see? That's not a rhetorical question. <laughs> I, I, I'm regretting bringing waves my, of people my gasping and moving backwards. No. Is that the correct answer? <laughs> There's no necessarily correct answer. That would be the flight response. I'm regretting putting kibble in my shorts. <laughs> For many reasons. For many, many, yes. Yes, many reasons. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. People would be. I think like just like what you said, a lot of the eyes widen up when people see something like a large cat or something like that, that yep. they, they dilate and start looking everywhere. And yep. they freeze and, and want to and they want to look around and figure out what is the best course of action. At first, a lot of people just don't run immediately. They, they freeze, assess, yep. and then they decide if they're going to move or not. That's I think I also, first on the list. Yeah, I think I would watch the cat's every mo movement too. Let the people who run uh, drive the cat away, or let the cat chase them. Then you can leave. Yep. You only have to be faster than the slowest person. Uh -huh. Exactly. That's really mercenary. Or you just got to put kibble in someone else's shorts. <laughs> they would rather have fresh meat, Johnny. Gravy. I think another thing you'd probably see some people do, especially when kind of thinking about younger children, is they try to find a way to hide behind an adult or behind someone else. Yep, that would be the flight response. So, there's a lot of different ways to react to the same situation. All right, there's an example. Um, they went outside and got in the truck she turned the key, but the engine just laughed. Pop the hood, I'll fix it. He started to get out of the truck, then it got dark. They looked at each other, the look on her brother's face she hadn't seen since he was three, and she scared him in her ghost costume on Halloween. Rodney got out of the truck, she couldn't move, the seatbelt felt safe across her chest. She watched him raise the camera and snap a photo. Does anybody see the response? Well, it's her freeze that she couldn't get out of the truck. She just sat there with the safety of the seatbelt. Exactly. Maybe not the best example, but yeah. All right. Uh, next is flight clusters. The flight response has obvious benefit in terms of human evolution. Typically, the more subtle than running away, most notable in the form of blocking behavior. The observations include the lower half of positioning away from stimulus, upper half ventral or torsal denial, blocking type displays, the face, various blocking behaviors, Eye blocking, face blocking with hands, etc. So you see he's blocking his face with his hand. That's one example. Hmm. Uh, more are using inanimate objects to block with, active movement away from stimulus, 
or the starter position type display. So feet staggered, pressure on balls of feet, hands pushing down on knees, etc. As an example, giant hounds with pitch black fur emerged from the trees. If it weren't for the dying sun, I'd never have seen them. They circled my car like ants to a sucker dropped on the ground. They bumped into my car, making it rock every which way. Their eyes were as black as their fur. They had no pupils, no trace of life to them, just black. The smell, I could taste it, wet dog. I felt a warm rush between my legs. Despite being surrounded and with nowhere to run, I turned the key again and the radio came to life along with Bob Marley singing about how everything was going to be all right. I found myself pulling down the folded mirror above me. I looked I took out the picture that I'd kept there of me and James from last year's birthday party. Our face is covered in chocolate cake. Does anybody see the response? Well, he pee, did he pee himself? Yeah. That's not... That's... That. Okay. Right. So, uh, so, it's like flight... If- Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I think I was going to say the wrong answer. <laughs> no, throw it out. I was going to say some kind of freeze because it sounds like he like he almost takes himself out of the situation because now he's get eaten by a bunch of dogs and he's looking at this picture. That's the flight response. So oh, he's okay. psychologically escaping the situation. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. go go to your happy place is... Uh, yeah. Is a, is a flight response. Okay. All right. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's like a blocking. That. Is that a blocking response? Like that, that whole idea of just coming up with something that's not going to really do anything, but it somehow takes your, your, your mind away from it. Like looking at the picture, I was trying to think about how that fits in. So it's kind of like, um, like when you have like, things to do you have like you have a book to write and you decide to clean the house or watch tv that's Mm -hmm. flight because you're escaping the situation though it's not um more psychological maybe one of us one of the things that many of us can relate to is the idea of doom scrolling through facebook when you have a project to work on yeah exactly Does that make sense? It does actually, and not just because I know exactly what Dan's talking about. Uh, the flight clusters, the the flight response, aka the aggression response, is more prevalent in some people than others, which can be apparent in their nonverbal presentation. Aggression can be linked to territorial behavior, laying on walls or objects splayed out upper or lower half displays, radial stance, etc. This cluster predicts aggressive behavior, typically manifesting before an incident. When the fight response is triggered, the body releases adrenaline for an energy boost and cortisol for blood co- co- coagulation. Blood rushes to the hands, making grasping grasping items easier physical ability is enhanced while fine motor control goes down and the heart rate increases if the option for flight is taken away the limbic system is more prone to a fight response fight cluster observations include the lower half spleen behavior or territorial behavior or athletic type foot positioning Uh, um, the upper half clenched ready fist a clench and release fists repeatedly pulsating hand wringing type movement upper half asymmetrical arm motion one arm moving normally in stride dominant arm held frozen carries intention upper half chest puffing out Face, nasal wing, dilation, flared nostrils, 
always a precursor of some type of imminent physical action uh, okay. significant indicator huh. do you have a question no i just uh, gonna watch people's noses from now on so it's a yeah. danger sign that's that's interesting so is there a, a nasal reaction in, in a in a, a freeze mode or the flight or preparation for flight mode so i absolutely get this one i just wasn't sure about the other two if there's something comparable i guess i'll be i'm guessing it's because uh, uh, Soby's answered that oh oh no you go ahead no it's just because you need air you you need to oxygenate before you kick ass right we, yeah uh, the brain we're needs fighting. more oxygen yeah you also like typically you'll breathe through your mouth when you're in some kind of stressful situation that allows more oxygen to get to the brain quicker. But um yeah, so you could the nose thing could be like um like disgust. If you like crunch your nose in disgust, that could be that's uh, response um it's not necessarily a fight cause fights um um does that answer your question yes it did I'm Pat all right. Uh, also, includes intensely fixed eye gaze as a constricted eyes with narrow focus. Um, head swaying side to side as if assessing bystanders, or a flushed look, redness of face, nostrils, most notably redness in the ears associated with saturation of upper respiratory tract. Um, I have one student that we can always tell when he's lying because his ears will turn bright red. So. And that's um, a response. A lie. So a lie is related to a fight. A fight response. Interesting. Uh, it can be in certain right. situations. Okay. Just depends. Um. So recommended reading, um, The Expression of Emotion in Man and Animals by Charles Darwin, uh, What Everybody What Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro, um, Verbal Communication, Science and Application by David Matsumoto, Mark G. Frank, and Hayusung Wong. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Nonverbal Communication, The Unspoken Dialogue by Judy K. Bergen, David B. Buller, and W. Gill Woodall, and Winning Body Language by Mark Bowden. Um, there's also a fawn response. There's also a fawn response and pacifying behaviors, but those are another presentation. Fawn response and is that the same thing? Fawn and pacifying, or no? Uh, so there are five now. My fight or flight binary is now after five. God, that's right. The pacifying behaviors like um like when people like um I don't know if you can even see me. The um when they they put their arms around themselves, that's pacifying behavior. That's um also like uh uh when they massage their neck or face or rub. Yeah, that, um, that's also pacifying, uh, lip rubbing. What about uh, we're all friends here kind of things? Like you put your arms up and you try to de-escalate things like, hey, it's cool, man. It's cool. We're all friends here. It's cool. Is that pacifying yeah. behavior? Hmm. Like that would be. I don't know. It's um. Yeah, those are tough. Huh. I was kind of trying to like call him a call him someone else. Um, it's not self-pacifying, but 
Yeah, it could be considered pacifying, I believe. Um, I don't you know. Wanna, I can you do that? You want to make sure your palms are out, though. So if you're showing your palms, that makes a difference. Really? Yeah. I don't know. To me, it seems that um, pacifying is more of flight, and fawning is a type of aggression, is a type of fighting. It's just using, God, you're awfully handsome. How are you, handsome? You know, like uh, from uh, Young Frankenstein, where he's about to be killed, and he how you doing, handsome? You know, tells the monster. Yeah. So bonding actually isn't covered in Aegis. So my knowledge of that isn't significant. But... Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, interesting. Yeah, this, um, um the, um, what everybody is saying is a classic. So I think we went after a fine. People keep recommending this book to me. I think it's time I finally get it. That's good. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel that is pretty interesting. Hmm. Uh, Joe Navarro. So I might kind of jump here and just kind of throw it out. Does, do people have some examples of where they've seen this in their writing or how it can, or something they've read? I see this used a lot in cozy mysteries where they they show the physical response more than the verbal response to different situations, especially to um, life and death or threatening situations. I think this is a this is a really cool collection of info for blocking when you're building sort of an intense scene or one that needs a lot of tension and you're looking for the depth of physical communication when verbal just won't do. Um, interesting thought came to me when Sobi was talking that usually like when you're watching a movie, like let's say Godzilla and Godzilla is coming and people instead of like running away, they just stand in the middle of the street with the mouths open watching what's happened next. So I think it's a very good example of fight or fright. So you basically, oh, maybe freeze. So you're yeah. actually frozen because something's coming, but you don't want to miss, want to miss it. You want to see what's going to happen, what Godzilla's going to do. So a lot of like movies, when you watch a um, person and you just yell and inside, run, run, the person just standing there watching. Yeah, I've read yeah, some that's very good example. that a good chunk of American men think they could take on a bear you know hand to hand and so i i take it these things are like evolutionarily dead ends sometimes you know that everyone thinks that they'll fight but when they really won't and i i think the fight response is probably the least common are, are there any percentages of, of uh people's general reaction to things because I, I think fight or flight would be the flight would be the biggest freeze up about I don't know, 10% and fight maybe about 10%. If I had to guess, and, and you know, when, when I saw Godzilla running through Tokyo, that's what I saw. But, you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious how common it is for people, you know, I mean, obviously alcohol would add into it, but um, how common it would be uh, to have these different responses to any given situation. Yeah, I don't know any exact percentages. I do know that, uh, like I said, the freeze response is more common in people that have suffered trauma in their lives but it doesn't necessarily um, require that we had a police officer come into our work uh, teaching us about active shooting and he d actually said that there is a, a most common response is freeze so like all this kind of like um look around for your situation whenever you enter the room see where is the exit or like something happening if you hear if you loud uh, pops so they're not balloons so they should be uh gunshots so like see if you can take a chair and break the window but i agree the most common response is freeze people just like yeah let's let's hide so never hide always move that was the police officer advice yeah it could also be hiding in plain sight so like in uh school shootings um they were in the uh, Pat. What's that 
one that you the, you have the Columbine shooting. The yeah, Columbine in shooting. That, in the Columbine shooting case, there were students who basically played dead, um, and with the killers walked right past them. Um, but in the Thurston killing, it was a couple. Of, it was a couple of students that took down the shooter. So, well, you're right. Okay. I was at the Thurston. That's why I remember that. You were at the Thurston. I, I was. was. I, I was. Uh, I was in. Um, I lived in Thurston at, at the time, and I was actually there. Was the, I was at the Seven Eleven getting getting my morning coffee when um, basically the entire high school emptied into the Seven Eleven, screaming. I wasn't yeah. actually at the high school, but um, that, I was. Yeah. I was a block away from a uh, Kip Kinkle. It was huh. not a good take. Yeah, no, no. Sophie knows I had um, two sons and a stepson at Columbine during the shooting. So, how'd they do? Did they come out? Yeah, they lost friends, and then on top of it, they knew the shooters pretty well. So it was a weird, weird time. It's a story that I'm possibly going to write this year, but I'm not sure I'm up to it. So, yeah, you don't need to write that one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, contact me if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, at sobysnow at gmail.com. How do you great. use this? Sobe, how do you use this information day to day in your in your classes? In, in, in great your... question. Well, um just trying to like A lot of it is we document it. So if they're expressing any behavior that's like out of the ordinary for them, for that particular student, um, then we document it and the therapist goes over it. So that's a lot of what it is. And then it's just if a student's having, if they're, they seem to be having a um, crisis, having an episode, then we try and address it before it can escalate um, using nonverbal communication and just uh, trying to um, do what we can to prevent it from getting worse. I see. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Could you go back to that one slide where you talked about what percentage of communication is non is nonverbal? Yeah, absolutely. So while you're doing that, I did have the opportunity right. of talking to a friend of mine who used to be in child welfare services because uh, we had worked a little bit on this, Sylvia and I, together at the writing retreat. And after that, I was talking to my friend and he was telling me that this is something that they would train in all the time, not so much for the youth, but to when they had to go into a home to see how the parents were responding and acting. Uh, and that's what they used a lot of that for, is to make sure to de-escalate or how to handle a situation inside a home that they were visiting. Yeah, I'm looking at, the, you know, when it, when it, me, I was, um, in my own writing, I think I'm too, I lean too heavy on the verbal characters talking too much. I've got to find ways to bring in more non-verbal I mean, I, I like the idea. He could, he could tense the room. I mean, he he could tell the room was tense, or he knew he was going to do something, or something like that. those kind of anticipatory comments that you get in trouble for being telepathic, and yet they're not telepathic because you're reading the communication that's not verbal. I think that's kind of like what Logan was saying: was this is a way to help build the tension in a scene without actually having them talk through it, but by how they present. Yeah, it's difficult because you got to, as a writer, we have to find ways to define it. You know, said, I could tell she was into me. How do you, you know, what do you, what do you go from there? I could tell I, she was into me. I think that's I, like what he was saying with what you got here is if you use, um, you know, the nonverbal communication, the paraverbal, you can, you know, explain how she was leaning towards him, the, the you know, the eyes soften everything and how he just that's felt that she was hair. all, yeah. You know, to how she just was paying attention and, you know, that's showing it instead of saying, oh, 
she's into me, but this is what I saw her doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely need to remember this though. I mean, I could tell she was into me by the way she held her vomit bag every time she looked at me. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that. you know, a, a smaller example. Am I unmuted? Yes, okay. sir. you're good. Um, a smaller example, I was speaking to a guy who's in the military and he said most military people can identify each other in a room without saying a word because they're all the people at the edges of the room who are looking at everyone else. And they ha they they share they share a look across the room as they scout every person. Interesting. I like that. But you gotta quantify it though. So you really I gotta pay more attention to how people are reacting, you know. Yeah. It also reminds you of, of the proverbial fight. You're mad, aren't you? I didn't say anything. You don't need to say anything. You're what I can tell, right? And then you have to like explain how slamming the door meant something and how, you know, polishing the gun again is suggestive, you know, all those things. You gotta you gotta you gotta say arguing is a, a behavior in that as well. So arguing is the aggression response or the fight response arguing is the flight response fight response oh fight response i see yeah you know one thing you might want to i'm going to use this kind of as a joke process here with you johnny but i think it, it kind of works because i know you hate commas oh, but I... and if you're talking about tempo and tone if you go with someone that's normally how they speak and then you take a walking speech and then you go to you know Captain Kirk speak, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can change the whole feeling of something just by the way that they break up their sentences and pause and, you know, where the commas are placed. Commas are over you. D Thank you. Those are periods. Those are periods. No, they're not. You think okay. they are, but a period is like this. They're yeah. ellipses. <laughs> they're ellipses. They're, they're... <laughs> fine, 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 fine. <laughs> so, so Johnny's putting on a show today. Um, this is a book that probably all of us should have. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I loved it a year or so ago called The Emotion Thesaurus. And it actually takes specific emotions. So it could be fear, fearlessness. It could be any number of things. And it breaks it down in terms of how they might be exhibited um, physically in the body and expressions. It also goes into how they might be expressed um, verbally and nonverbal. And it's, uh, it's really quite useful if you're kind of trying to zero in on an emotion and express it in your writing and you keep finding yourself using cliches because you know sort of cliche, the normal cliche descriptor so um it's really it's really pretty good all the emotion thesaurus yeah that's a good book i i, I don't use it nearly as much as i need to emotion thesaurus all right thank you Yeah. 17 bucks on Amazon. Okay. Woo! I find the emotion thesaurus is it's the closest book to my desk if I'm writing. You know, there's not a lot of books that you want in the writing moment, and that's one of them. Yeah. And and you're a techie, Logan, so you need help. I do. Uh, J JC, it's a three dollars Kindle version. So you can grab as many as you want. There is a profession, there is emotions, there's um, location, so three bucks on Kindle. <laughs> yeah. Is that the first me. edition? Because yeah. second edition six. <laughs> Choose your poison. The emotions changed a lot after 2020. You might want to get the newer one. Yeah, you got a point. I'll get the newer one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that. I was filling up my Amazon. Ooh, $1.75 credit. So kind of just throwing it out there is 
people finding this a helpful topic. I think for me it is. I, I like I said when we went through it before, I thought it was really good stuff. I Any thought other... it's been interesting. Okay. Any other comments people want to throw out there before we uh, close off the presentation? Uh, I think it was great. Yeah, thank you, Toby. That yeah, I need, I need to do more body language in my stuff, so I really appreciate this. Uh, is there anything you feel like could have been better? Or... No, I, I think you did really well. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, just getting used to doing presentations, and that's what this yeah. is all about. But one of the reasons when you presented this to the leadership where I thought this was so great is we're always being told to show, not tell. Uh, and I think this is a prime example. Just even this slide you have right up now is a great way of seeing how can we show what's happening in our stories instead of just telling the stories. So thank you very much, Sobi, for this, this presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was thinking... I, I I forgot. I think it's been done, but I, I'm just uh, you know, a, a sleuth, for example, we talk about sleuths who's really good at body language would just go so far, right? I'm sure it's been done, but it's I haven't seen it done well, or I, I don't remember anyone who does it. In a book, you'd, you'd just be over there describe all these different scenes, and you know, I mean, I can, he has a tick. It's one thing if somebody has a tell, you know, every time he lies, his ears go red, you know. That poor son of a bitch is in for a hard life. I'm just going to put that out there. But, um, if, you know, but if you have a tell, that's one thing. But just being able to see, well, you know, um, oh, how they, how, you know, the subtlest things that you can read and how accurate that might be just in, in body language, whether or not, not just fight and flight, but just general truthfulness or or demeanor or enthusiasm and things, you know. It's, it's a lot of when they a lot of not all but a lot of when they try and it's when they try and hide their the expression that it becomes more like they're hiding something so i see i see so um okay yeah so being able to yeah being able to know when uh, which which guy at the bar is really the dangerous one you know i, like I think we see hints of it in some of the more classics you know like you know perot uh, some of, you know, Sherlock Holmes, you know, where they say certain <laughs> things and they say how they respond, you know, they, they, but it's always kind of done after the fact of this is what I saw that led me to that instead of bringing it into the, as the story builds. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely good. Um, I just still like the fight or flight and freeze response. I'm not going to go with the other two. I, I deny its existence. It's it's not real. Those aren't real. We're gonna. I'll, I'll live. I'll live with three for now, maybe. But you know. But I don't know. Fight, well, flight, and freeze. Those seem to be the three common. Three yeah, most but, common. Reactions. Well, it's I, not exactly I, a response. It's more to like calm the response. Yeah, I and mean, we we started this from that class on horror where I was talking about the two main reasons when you when you met with somebody who's who's a. Uh, in your face or something and that was uh you know do you love this person do you hate this person i mean and uh so you know the fight or flight uh, is also um you know take or get away you know, or the buddhist would say you know it's attachment but you know um and but boots you know what is this something you want is it something you, know, you want to push away you know so i don't know i'm trying to put a, i'm trying to do some kind of universal theory of of philosophical attraction theory like physics and and jessica i love your cat i've got a black one too not nearly as friendly or as <laughs> or as painful as yours she's hungry she tries to get double fed by me and my husband so she's trying to trick me <laughs> okay if we're done i'm gonna go ahead and end the recording